Okay, we've already walked through a bank reconciliation where everything worked out perfectly and everything reconciled without any problems. Now we're going to walk through a bank reconciliation that does have problems. Something that some items that you may run across when you do your own bank reconciliation. Now bear with me, I had to kind of create problems in our sample company here. So um, there's one step that in this particular video I'm not going to be able to show you, but it's covered in the other video. Okay, let's actually get to our reconciliation rather than going to accounting and reconciling. Let's go to banking and we're going to do business checking this time and let's click go to register. I can't emphasize enough how important this register can be if you're having problems reconciling your accounts. So I jotted down that as of January 31st, my bank account was 4,215.70. So I can tell already just by looking at the register that I have a problem, okay? And um, so the 4,215.70, I got that by logging into my checking account and finding the balance as of January 31st. So let's go to reconcile now. Okay, now it brought us straight to this screen. Um, here's the info I put in, 4,215.70, ending date of 131 of 18. It did not, it skipped that first initial screen um, because I already tried to record this video and I had to make a change and I had already input this on that first screen. So this is what I input. You'll input that on the usual first screen, just like in the regular um, video. So that's the part I wanted to explain. Okay, so here we are. We have a difference. Um, and how are we going to figure out what that difference is? Well, first thing, we can kind of do a quick scan down the list of transactions and see if anything stands out. And the thing that stands out to me is that we have a duplicate deposit here from Amazon. So in this case, um, it could be something like, you know, a temporary glitch in the bank feed and the same transaction got brought in twice. I find this problem happens more often within PayPal when I'm trying to reconcile that, but I recreated that scenario here. So clearly this is the right one. This green symbol um, means it's added from the bank feed. This doesn't have that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click here, edit. We're going to go to more. And then we're going to delete. Are you sure you want to delete? Yes. The other way to delete transactions is from the register. You could find it that way and delete the transactions from the register. One word of caution. If the transaction you're deleting is really a transfer between accounts, it could pop up again. And you may have to, on the banking tab, let me... Let me just hop over there really quickly. If you deleted something, so in our case, it didn't pop up again. But if it's transactions between accounts, what I've noticed sometimes, if there's an error, if there's multiple transfers going on, we've got double counting, it'll just keep popping up time and time and time and time and time again. If that happens, simply check the thing that's in error um, exclude that transaction and then if you are absolutely positive that it is not a transaction you need you need to select it over here on exclude and delete it otherwise it'll just keep popping up for you it's just one little quirk I've noticed okay let's go back to our register Here's the other place you can delete things. Let's say we were going to delete this one, which we're not, but I could click on it and click delete. Okay, let's go back to the uh, reconciliation. Okay, so we've deleted that duplicate 
Amazon. Let me try and get rid of these messages that keep coming each time we're on this screen. Okay, but we still have a difference. So what could that be? Let's scroll down, take a look, see if anything jumps out. Oh, this is interesting. This is 5406. Our difference is 5306. And judging by the date, I'm thinking it's a timing issue. So although QuickBooks is saying that this transaction occurred on 130, it's not showing up. It's not um, being reflected in our bank balance as cleared as of that date. So in that case, that's a timing issue. And we would simply uncheck that um, and and then next, like when we go to reconcile the February statement, it will have cleared in February. So that's the same thing with checks. Remember with a check, you could write a check, but it may not have cleared in the month that you write it. So you would need to uncheck a check that has not cleared. It's a lot of saying the word check. Okay, so now we have a dollar difference and I could spend a lot of time searching for that dollar difference, but I'm gonna chalk it up to human error, and I'm not going to spend my time chasing that down. If you want to spend time chasing down a dollar, that's completely up to you. So instead, I still don't have that like green, okay, finish now reconciling button. Instead, I have to drop down. I could save this for later if I keep, if I wanted to keep hunting around for my difference. But instead, I think I'll hit finish now. Hold on, you have a difference. And what QuickBooks can do is they can just plug that difference for you. So if you have a small remaining difference, five cents, a dollar, three dollars, 56 cents, you can let QuickBooks just make a quick adjustment. It'll get you back to square one, back to the right number, starting um, in your next month's bank reconciliation. So if I... If this was a true reconciliation, I would add adjustment and finish. But because I, I fudged some numbers so that I could duplicate some bank reconciliation problems for you. So I'm actually not going to do that. I'm going to hit go back. But hopefully that gives you an idea of things to look for. Like I said, when in doubt, go back to the register or use this and compare this compared to your bank statement. If, if something on here does not match your bank statement, that's the problem because we're comparing what we have in QuickBooks to our bank statement when we do our bank reconciliation. Hopefully these problems won't ever pop up for you, but if they did, I wanted to give you the tools that you need to help problem solve. Um, so basically, also one last point to point out. It doesn't help to like willy nilly just uncheck things. You have to have an understanding about why something gets unchecked. If if you're having to uncheck a lot of stuff in the middle, you know, just to find a way to agree to the right balance, um, that's telling me you've got a problem that needs investigating. So don't just use the check marks as a way to like get through the reconciliation if you do that, you could end up with like a bigger problem. You have to understand, like in our case, we knew that was a duplicate. And so that's why we had to get rid of it. In this case, I could pull up my bank statement and I could see that this Etsy deposit didn't clear my bank until February 1st. So, you know, you have to have you have to understand the explanation for why you are checking or unchecking items. Either they have cleared your bank account that month and agree with your bank account, or they don't and they remain unchecked. Okay, hope that helps.